Venus powers activate. <laughs> Whoo! All right, babies, I'm back and here we go. It's RuPaul's Drag Race UK season three. We've got a whole new set of queens. We have two runways today. Three if you count the workroom entrances. A funny mini challenge and a little backstory on a few queens here. And a twist for the lip sync. Let's get started. Cue my queen. Listen. It's your boy Maddie Rance. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Do me a favor, hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Become a part of my Rant Pack family. I thank you for being here. For those of you who already been here, hi, hugs, hugs. Vacation was great. I'm rejuvenated. I feel new energy inside me and I'm ready to get these reviews started, these reactions going, and of course, all the other things I have set up with podcasts and my partnership with Airtime. Let's go ahead and get my social medias out the way. All you gotta do is hit that link tree. Grab a branch, click on that branch. Whether it's Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, you'll find it there. You also can catch me on the Stereo Podcast app with podcasts on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And again, I'm also partnered with the Airtime app for Tuesdays and Thursday shows. Tuesdays is Drag Race Everything, and of course on Thursdays is Drag Race Trivia and Hot Topics. And there's going to be a new show added to that lineup very soon, so be on the lookout for that as well. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. So I want to say that seeing the clips from season two were just a good refresher for a lot of us. A little mint in that mojito. <laughs> As we got a chance to see our favorites again from last season. And of course, get ourselves prepared for who is to walk through the workroom. Shall we start? I just want to give you a little something something when it comes to these inferences. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but just a little feeling. I want to give. Veronica Green is the first one to step through here, giving us, I want to be casted on Wicked. Look at me. Green. Veronica. Green. This is cool. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, I'm just glad to see Veronica back and her getting a second chance again. Next up is Kitty Scott Claus. I love, love, love Kitty Scott Claus. Okay. I'm here for the Legally Blonde outfit. I thought it was really cute. I'm entertained by Miss Kitty Scott Claus. River Medway is next, giving disc. Uh, River Medway is next, giving. Ah, uh, this is a decent look. <laughs> I'm just gonna be real with you. I saw this. I said, "Okay, baby." I don't know what's to. I don't. I don't know what's to come. But I enjoy her cutesiness and her spirit. She seemed really sweet when she walked in the workroom. I'm going to wait for more outfits. I am, because I didn't, the car wash arms, I said, oh, baby. It gave me three's company, but four's overcrowding. It's that. Scarlet Harlot had probably the loudest entrance ever, and it continued throughout. Mama was yelling. I know she was excited, cute, adorable. The dress was a tad boring, but she was loud. I know she was just very excited to be there, so... All right, Scarlet. I'm going to wait. I'm going to see some more from you, baby, okay? Vanity Milan came in next. Now, Vanity is gorgeous, but I'll be honest with you and say, I do not like this outfit. Mm -mm. It's giving me very pride parade. That. But she's gorgeous, and I love her. I I, I really do. I just, mm -mm. I did not like this entrance. Mm -mm. Ella the Day is next. Okay, I'll just be honest. Let's, we can pause this here. The entrance looks were not really selling me on everybody. I was more so enjoying their personality <laughs> because this is cool, but I'm not like, ooh, who is this? She just seems awesome. Veronica Green is jealous already because apparently Ella Vade has the career that Veronica wants to have. And that slip up moment in the workroom when she starts to stumble over her words as she's talking to Ella, that was awkward sauce. It was a little bit awkward sauce. Not the A1 I asked for, and don't put that on a steak. It's not really good for it, okay? Just to say. Just saying. 
But um, mm, Ella's gonna be a threat. That I can see, and I am excited to see what she's gonna bring to the table. <laughs> okay, so possibly <laughs> it could be taken as a controversial entrance line, but honestly, I think she landed the punch where the line needed to be. Theresa May is next. I live for this bitch. I gotta tell you, I saw this episode for the third time now before I did the review, and I said, oh, I, I fucking love her. <laughs> I think she's everything. I get the joke. I get her personality, and she seems like a total sweetheart. So, love me some Theresa May, and I thought this outfit was cute, and I love when she turned around and said, moo. <laughs> Love me some Teresa. Next up, breaking boundaries here with RuPaul Drag Race is Victoria Scone. Victoria Scone is the first AFAB queen on the series that's assigned female at birth. Honestly, this is when I've said, oh, I'm awake. <laughs> I'll, I'll be real. I, I, so who is this? Ew. She's giving me everything I need. I love to hear her speak. Or if anyone knows of her having a podcast now, please let me know because I'd love to be a subscriber. She has such a sweet tone and she's so adorable. I love her. <sighs> Electra Fence is next. Five foot two, a little pocket rocket as she describes herself. That is where we'll leave that. No, girl. Not this outfit. No, girl. Not that wig. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I think she's sweet. I think she's adorable. But no, not this out. Next up is Anubis, who is 19 years old from Brighton with Egyptian heritage. I said, let's see what, I, I said, let's see where this goes. Let's see where this goes, okay? Baby, the next 19 year old to walk through the workroom was Crystal Versace serving you a mug down. Now this is a lot, of, this is red. Red, 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 red. I'll tell you that right now, that makeup is severe. That mug clearly came with payments because that structure already at 19 is insane. And I was thinking to myself, aren't you still growing? Like, won't that need to be adjusted still? Hey, if you love plastic surgery, go for a baby. But I also was like, all right, all right. That face is already constructed for the look. Good luck, bitches. <laughs> She's not, I don't know what she has to do. Like, okay. Last but not least is Charity Case. Uh, walking to the workroom, giving you your worst nightmares. I'm telling you, there was a rat that was glued to that dress, y'all. I thought that was a gag. <laughs> Uh, but they seem very interesting. I love it when we get alternative looks in drag and it's not always the full glamour spill. So again, I want to see what Charity Case has for us here today. RuPaul has now entered the workroom to greet her UK queens and tell them what their mini challenge is. And of course, to give the maxi challenge. Now the mini challenge, everybody, consisted of dirty charades. And they had to guess movie titles, show titles, actors, this, that, and the other. Anything that could be played anything, anybody's name or a title that could be played with and made into a dirty word or a dirty saying that then someone had to guess through charades. They were then split into several different groups. I would like to say that Teresa, Victoria Scone, and yes, Electra Fence were actually doing very well at this game. A couple of the other girls were doing pretty good too. But Veronica Green, my God, they gave you the curious case of Benjamin, what was it, Bumhole? a very long statement to make for charades. I don't know how I would have been able to get through that unless you were able to, you know what, actually she could have done a better job. I think if she got curious down, uh-huh, uh-huh, and then, yeah, curious bum hole. And then maybe a little, see, I'm trying to make some sense out of this, I do apologize. <laughs> Try to help the I'm trying to help the bitch. But no, I, I thought that Veronica was given the womp womp edit with that one. So I assumed the worst for her this episode. We'll see later. Also, I love seeing Victoria do a full camp just crazy moment of her dying trying to get to the bowl in order to play charades. RuPaul was giving her usual cackle of a cack, 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 cack laugh. RuPaul gives you her good cack. That means that you're in the competition still for another two episodes, possibly. The mini challenge actually didn't have a winner. It was just RuPaul finding a way to be entertained with these new queens and learn something about them 
for her to judge later, I guess. Now time to present the maxi challenge, but she wants to bring in the Brit crew first, but instead of them actually being there, they're just on the screen showing them polishing badges, you know, a little something like that, something like that. Child, like, okay, <laughs> y'all about to get some badges, cool. This is what it is, but let me tell you what your main maxi challenge is. You have two runways you need to do, babies, okay? Queen of your hometown, queen of your hometown. This is one that they do often for the season, and I do like that they do it. I wish they would do this often for all the other seasons, too. Like, let us know where you're from. Something like that, something cool like that. Also, it would be fun for people who are from those hometowns to see the queens represent their hometowns like that on television. Ah. The second one, which was kind of an open category, I don't know how y'all felt about this, favorite things, dot, dot, dot. It could be anything. Okay. That makes that category all over the place for me, in my opinion. But I said, all right, I, I, cool. Favorite things. So as the episode progresses, which, it's re which it really was, entrance, minigame, a few moments to know some of the people, runway immediately, all of that. We get to find out just a couple of stuff here and there. Charity Case made this, wow, that's so talented and brilliant. Veronica Green's story the entire episode. No one's picking on you. You're not considered to be the weakest person here. No one's bullying you. You have more confidence now. Veronica Mean. Thank you, Kitty Scott Claus. <laughs> Veronica definitely had a huge story arc through this episode. It was very evident, like, okay, she's back. She's back. She's back. Welcome back, Veronica. I said, all right. Don't make me sick of this girl already, okay? <laughs> we wanted her back. Don't make us ask for her to go home. River Medway and Vandy Milan were having a conversation, and Vandy low-key was, uh, was playing Best Judy this week because she had two conversations with different people who had good story arc moments. River Medway tells us that they lost their mother two weeks prior to them getting the call to be on Drag Race and that they decided to be on Drag Race because they wanted to still do this, you know, not just for themselves, but for the mother and to not, you know, let this bring them down. But Lord have mercy, geez, River, you got my love, baby. You know, I lost my mama. So I'm hearing that and seeing you Kind of hold it together. I saw some emotions there. I know this is really tough for you, baby, but I, I got to give you all my love. Regardless if I think some of your looks are going to look like, ooh. Okay. All right. You got my love, sister. This is heavy. So soon to get back in the competition this way. And on top of it, I thought it was really special that you brought some of your mom's clothes to the competition. So she's there in spirit for sure. Vanity then finds a way over by Teresa. This is having a conversation with Vanity about relationships because Vanity's married. Teresa has, I think, boyfriend, husband, partner? Boyfriend, 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 partner. We'll keep that. But their partner, who Teresa moved from Spain to Newcastle for, is now in Spain teaching while Teresa's out here by herself. Beach. I was like, oh my God. This is early, but I'm also like, thank you for the story and thank you for letting us in and thank you for being vulnerable in this moment. Oh my God, Teresa, I want to be your friend so bad. <laughs> like, honestly, after that and seeing your emotions and how sweet you were, you're like, all oh, these people are so cool and awesome. I'm just happy that we're all here. And it was, it was, it was a sweet moment from Teresa. So I was glad that we had, we got those moments. Of course, Victoria being there is a huge deal for not only Drag Race, but uh, for the community in drag because there are a lot of AFAB queens out there that have been performing and now one of their sisters is up here front and center darling and she was giving us nothing but life this episode, okay? Woo! Let's get to the runway, shall we? Bring it to the runway, runway, bring it to the runway, please, snap, snap. RuPaul, I like this, you do look good. I feel like I've seen this kind of print on you before with this magenta and the black stripes. In a, sim in a different type of look, but I still like this from you with this wig. I thought Michelle looked good. I think Graham looks great. And Matt Lucas, you were a great guest judge and we were happy to have you there. Queen of your hometown is first and Victoria Scone starts us off giving us Cardiff winner. This was fire. I was, I love, I love everything about it. it. It was so polished, camp, 
and whimsical and beautiful this flower represents. Oh, it pussy. <laughs> it is so puss puss. Go on, Victoria. Next up is Kitty Scott Claus uh, serving Birmingham. <laughs> and Kitty was giving chocolate. Now, the first time I saw this, I said, what the fuck is this? But now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, the unitard is chocolate. And then the jacket that's over it is the wrapper because that's the gold on the inside, but the purple on the outside. And then she has the milk. It is still an okay, and I mean okay outfit. It's not bad. Kitty looks good, but Kitty's okay. <laughs> it was okay, Kitty. Today, giving us Dagenham teas as she is showcasing the women's equality movement that happened out there. And of course, serving us sort of a mod 60s inspired look. I think she looks really cute. I love the sign. I love the message. It's adorable. I like. I thought this was a good outfit. Anub is serving Brighton, giving us Helter Skelter. Uh, I could tell. <laughs> I, I did. I got the Helter Skelter. Um, I got more American Horror Story, but I don't. I just wasn't feeling this. I'm sorry. I just wasn't. I think she's a sweetheart, but I just was not feeling this, y'all. Mm -mm. Just wasn't feeling it. Next up is River Medway giving Medway and. <laughs> A statue of Thomas Waghorn that apparently they do this sort of thing with the traffic cone with it. I'm not sure if the statue itself always has it on there, but I guess they always do something with it and it's famous for this interpretation. RuPaul was tickled pink. I think it's fabulous that the hair was done this way with the look. It's an okay outfit. It's an okay outfit, but this was entertaining. And again, we talk about presentation being key on a runway. If you can make someone giggle, or if you can just entertain them, honey, it will sell the gourmet. And that's what I think River did with this look. Crystal Versace is next, and I know. I thought Miss Mama was about to be Kimora Hall on the green screen, giving us nothing but a face. Sister, I Michelle actually letting this pass through, that bothered me just a tad bit. Your mug is stamped. It's beautiful. It is one da 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 done. But this is a unitard with a cage over it and some ivy, and we calling it a day? Mm -mm. And I understand this is supposed to represent Kent, but I'm also like, this is green screen. I, no, no. Veronica Green serving Rochdale, right? I hope I said that right. Uh, this is a cottony look. This is, this is what Aiden Zane was trying to do. <laughs> no, it wasn't, no, I'm just kidding. That was cool. I like it. It's all, it's all right. It's all right. There were a bunch of okays that were happening here this week. There were some good looks, but there were also not bad ones. They were not totally bad. Scarlet Harlot as East London. This was her best look for the night. I'm telling you this now. I thought this was beautiful. I thought this was a fabulous look. I thought I I understood the reference. I got the full, the full point. I love the pearls on top that were done this way. Oh, sister. Queen of Hearts wig for sure. I knew what queen she was referencing, but it was, you know, it reminded me of the um, Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland spill with that hair, but I thought she was fabulous. Look, I thought this was cute. Mm -hmm. Electra Fence doing Burnley Proud, uh, serving coal miner. Uh, she said that her father, brothers, family all were into this. We're all coal miners, so I definitely see where this would be a personal uh, take to give us. However, Mama is tiny and chaps are not your friends at all. And you are hipping, girl, like you were padded. So that padding with them chaps in this, it was it was giving me a compacted can. So like, there needs to be a little something different done to elongate, because right now Kenya Michaels would have served you down, sis. But I, I, I didn't care for her, I thought she was okay too. It's Vandy Milan serving South London and low key, is this also Jamaica tease down there, baby? I was here for this colors and she was given sort of the codes and stuff like that for, you know, the mailing codes and all that kind of stuff all over the outfit. But I, I enjoy, I thought this was cool too. It's cool, y'all. I'm looking at it like this. So please forgive me if I'm like, eh, eh. I'm also looking at it. Shit could be bought at the store. And the tool, of course, needed to be made. I love a box braid. It was cool. I liked it. But that's it. I liked it. Theresa May serving Newcastle sock. Football, excuse me, almost at soccer, St. America. 
I like this. I thought this was fabulous. This was one that I felt had more details going into it. The purse was cute with the soccer ball. I thought mama looked good. I was here for Theresa May's outfit. Charity Case serving Lancashire and giving the roses all the full bloom, but also serving a nightmare if you get too close. I got Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are the champions. A little bit. I thought this was fabulous though. I really did. I wish the stockings weren't this weird Christmas green and they were the same kind of green she sort of painted herself with, but this is fabulous. I hate that Christmas green though. Ugh, gross. All right, next up is favorite things for the category on the runway. First up is Victoria Scone serving us afternoon tea with finger sandwiches, a beautiful print, and a Lee Bowery inspired ensemble. Puss, puss again. Victoria Scone, in my opinion, had the best outfits of the entire group for this first episode. Slayed, 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 slayed. This is everything. Top to bottom, nothing wrong. Serving. Kitty Scott Claus is next, and she's serving us ABBA. ABBA Basic. I like Kitty, but this was girl. It's cool. That's it. It don't go no higher, no lower than that, honey. It's cool, and that's it. That's all. Ella of a day is next. Pride Progress flag. I actually like this. I did. I thought this was fabulous. Honestly, I thought the wig was great. I like this. I did. <laughs> I feel like somebody's like, Matt, no, I did. I thought this was, it was cool. I think she's pretty. I liked it. I thought it was nice. Next up is Anubis giving a sea creatures. And this look she does tell us, uh, does pay homage to their father. I, I think that's special, but I also am going to have to just say it's an orange dress with a net on it and a fucking weird wig. It's a weird wig. It's a weird wig. It don't make no damn, every, it don't make no sense. None of it. The the weird exposed zipper in the back. Nah. It's, it, it's a chop. It's a chop. River Medway, chop. This, I, don't, I didn't get music from this. I got aerobics i got working out and dancing kind of but like i didn't get music from this this is not my favorite this was a chop too for me crystal versace's next with cats this is low-key pussy high high key pussy <laughs> looking at this again for the third time i was like oh okay this i like better than the first outfit this gave me attention to detail the mug once again is stabbed for filth Love the ears, love the hot, I love the cowl of this whole jacket bit. It's hot. It's it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. Veronica Green is next and computer games are her favorite things. And she once again is determined to wear flats on the first fucking episode of the show. What is, I, bring it down, Matt. Bring it down. She did the same thing with the Boy George look. Like what, girl? You could have done a you could have done a sneaker heel, you could you could have found some Skechers. It's in the ass. You could have done that. Boo! Uh, it's okay. It's cool. A bedazzled N sixty four controller. Awesome. I I just wanted some. I wanted something different from Veron. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Scarlett Harlot also did music. This one I can see a little. I get this more. But I don't know why everyone has to do 80s for music. Like, that's the only era that music existed in or something. And I'm like, child, you weren't even born in the 80s. I don't know why we're doing this today. But it's cute because of the, the cassette player with the headphones that are wrapped all around the body. But it's really just a dress with a big wig, ghost makeup, and a headset and a cassette player. If that's all it is, but presentation was sold on the runway, not for me. Electra Fence, her birthday. No. 
it's it's cute. It's not impressive. She looks like Jojo Siwa. Like Jojo Siwa's little sister. Chop. Vandy Milan giving Estonia uh, where their husband is from and one of their favorite places where they spent five years. I think this is also a look. I have elements that I enjoy and things I don't. I wanted to, I think I want to see something different from Vanity. This is not my favorite. It's cool, but I'm not like, oh, this is fire. It's cool though. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's nice. It's not a chop, but it's cool. Theresa May is next and she is serving art. Why was this not in the top? Why was Teresa not in the top this week? This was fire. I live for this outfit. She painted all of this, mind you. I thought it was really special. I, I normally hate that wig color with an infinite passion. It worked for this look. And the makeup was fire too. I, I don't get it. I don't get why they do I don't get why they don't give her time. Mm. I was here for this Teresa. This was this was cute. Very nice. Charity Case is next, last, and certainly not least. And they are serving freak shows. This was very much that. I love this. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, American Horror Story, some sort of movie that's just gonna make me nervous. <laughs> Smiley, all that kind of stuff. This was fabulous. Mama said, I'm not tucking for shit. I don't give a fuck. I was here for that. Uh, again, I'm gonna keep it just like I did for Veronica. I, I ain't a fan of a flat. But I also know this, I also know Charity Case goes for these characters. It's a little bit tricky as I'm trying to judge appropriately, but I wouldn't have found, but if they were in a heel with this, it would have thrown me off. But also if she was walking like a nasty little runway moment with that face, it would have kind of been brilliant too. But I also like the just craziness of it. And there was a dick in the box. <laughs> right, those are the runways. Let's proceed with the rest of the show. So the tops ended up being Victoria Scone, Crystal Versace, and Scarlet Harlot. Interesting. The bottom three ended up being River Medway, Anubis, and Electra Fence. I, yes, agree. Completely. <laughs> agree. Victoria and Crystal were the top two of this week. Scarlet, they just enjoyed certain things and left it at that. <laughs> but the bottom three, it was a little bit of a tighter race. However, Rivers pointing saved the day for her, and it ends up being Anubis and Electra Fence in the bottom. Untucked, I'm now seeing Charity is ready for drama. Because Mama told Scarlett to her face, girl, I didn't think you should have been the top at all. I thought that shit was basic. Down. <laughs> Anubis, of course, was emotional. Other people were feeling a ways. Oh, it's her first day, all that kind of stuff. Cheers, cheers, cheers. You know the rest. Let's get to it. The lip syncing, there's a twist. The top two get to lip sync for the win. Of course, the bottom two get to lip sync for survival. The top two being Victoria Scone and Crystal Versace lip sync to Eclipse of the Heart. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit... Come on. Y'all know the song. So I saw that lip sync a few times. I still think Victoria was the winner, but I see why Crystal won. Crystal was entertaining, very expressive. I mean, it, this felt the same, but very expressive. It was a little sexy for the song for me. And I liked campiness. I liked the campiness from Victoria a lot better. However, I could see why Crystal won and Crystal did win the lip sync. You get a badge, no cash. Back of the stage. For Anubis and Electra Fitz, okay? Anubis over there looking like the Helter Skelter goddamn slide itself, that tall and everything. Electra Fence is over here giving me living on the dance floor, boom. All of a sudden, Abby Lee Miller's about to walk out there, point your toes, just, just that. We didn't get that though. I liked the lip syncing better the third time. The first time I was not impressed, regardless of all the stunts and trickery that was happening. That African dance moment that she threw the little wop to boo girl, that was so messy. <laughs> It was such a mess. I was like, oh, sister. But she did some really nasty stunts, especially when she was, um, Electra was locking it down, locking it down with the knees and then was jumping up on them. Honey, let me tell you this right now. I may be able to Megan the Stallion, but I ain't doing that. 
Ain't no way I'm about to be jumping off the floor with these knees like that. <laughs> so I was impressed. I thought she was a little manic sometimes. And other times it was a little difficult to get into because, again, that outfit she was wearing, I just, I, yuck. But Anubis was doing their best cap and the best they could. They tried their best, but it, it, it nope. I, I tell you that right now. So it was very hard for Anubis to follow through with that act because this baby over here was throwing every stunt, every split you could think of. Sis was throwing it out there. Sis was throwing it out there. So Electra Fence gets to stay and Anubis is sent home. Sad to see you go, sister, but, it's infor but unfortunately that is the name of the game. 11 Queens remain. I'll see y'all tomorrow for episode two review. Don't forget to hit that like button, share, and subscribe before you leave. Thanks again for tuning in. Also, get in that comment section and talk about the episode with your boy and with your other fellow Rant Packers. I appreciate y'all for tuning in and for the support. I'll see you next time and on airtime. Bye.